boys and girls welcome back to the team Khaled youtube channel my name is Renzo and today we're back with the second part of the defending tutorial in order for you to be able to defend a little bit better in and around the box and in this part we're gonna explain some extra stuff that we haven't covered in the previous one so uh yeah let's just get straight into it and like always i mean you know it by now sit back relax and enjoy Alright, so starting off with this video, we're starting off with the best way how you should be covering through balls. And I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty tough on FIFA 21 to cover all the through balls. But in this case, the first example that we have here is just, it's pretty easy to notice that this guy only has the, uh, the option to play someone in and then play a through ball. So what we should have done here, maybe a little bit earlier, switch over to Roberto Carlos and try and cover the space that's in behind. I've pointed it with the arrow. That is the dangerous space and it's pretty, pretty tough to uh, be always in time with these. But on FIFA 21, the true balls are super assisted. So you have to be covering them at all times, like we do here. We're not pressing, we're not pu stepping out with our defenders, especially our center backs, because there's usually either a way where the the passer finds a way through in order to uh, to get the through ball um, to the striker. So what you want to do is you want to minimize the gap um, like we did here as well. And this one is a little bit more tricky. Why is it more tricky? Because at this point, when you see a striker, or in this case it was De Bruyne, making this upwards or downwards run, it is uh, literally danger. Because now, it might not look like he could be playing a good through ball, but if he does so, like you can see here, it is pretty dangerous and you have to be on point with your switching um, to your center backs because this is very, very dangerous. Um, if you don't switch in time with your center backs, he will definitely go through. And also, the danger within that, uh, that attack is that if he even plays like this, maybe an, uh, an L1 X pass or LBA if you're on Xbox, it still kind of gets corrected to uh, as a through ball. I I don't agree with it either, but that's just the way it is. And in this clip, yeah, I mean, if you've played FIFA 21 a lot, you definitely notice this situation. The FIFA 21 through ball. At this point, right here, you should be looking at your center back. Is he still running? Then switch over as soon as possible because when you see a player, an opposition going downwards towards the back line and there is a strike with him running, it's likely that they're going to try this long through ball. So what we need to do here, we switch to our center back and just keep running um, into the space that could be dangerous, like we see here. And then next, cutting passing lanes, and this one it is uh, a little bit more general than uh, covering through balls because cutting passing lanes is something that you're able to do throughout the pitch. And let's start off with the first example here. I want you guys to just pay a close look to our controller here. Uh, because cutting passing lanes is just a combination of using your fast jockey, your regular jockey, and kind of baiting people in making some passes, like we do here. <clears throat> There's only two options for him to really pass to. So what we do here, we fast jockey with L2, R2, or left trigger, right trigger if you're on Xbox, uh, into the gap that if, if he even plays the left striker or the right striker, we're there. And even if he manages to still play the pass into the striker, then we would still be around him, right? With uh, Bruno Fernandes in this case. It's super important that you always try to cover the most dangerous pass at first before you're going to uh, stress about maybe wider passes. Like for example in this case, um, what I said about earlier is about the baiting strategy. In this case with Fidal, there are like two options. The, the striker that's kind of like below the webcam border and the one that's to our left. We kind of first sw uh, jockey to the one that was below the webcam border to trick him into making the pass to the one that was to our left. And we still kind of have the pace and time to get there if he plays that pass. So that is the kind of baiting strategy that you guys need to uh, start uh, trying to work on. Once you get more familiar with these fast jockeying and your team's uh, pace in general, it is definitely when you uh, start noticing when you can bait out opponents or not. Um, 
and here this case as well like in this example there is only one really dangerous pass that he could go forward quickly right now with Kleiber and that is the one into the middle the one down the wing he's not in behind yet he might become in like a second or two but we try to cover this pass first and yeah that's what we do we uh, we just intercept the pass very easily with Renato Sanchez and that led to that uh, great miss of CR7 um, so yeah that is very uh, very much how you want to be covering passing lanes and it's very tough that last case, uh, last example it could go wrong as well like the pass maybe gets a bit corrected but in this case as well we're just baiting him into playing a dangerous pass and because we want to intercept the passing lane by just quickly switching to Renato Sanchez and move over to that left side we're gonna bait this guy into making a quick pass again because this at this point the ball still has some time to travel like you can see here we barely miss it but now he sees oh my my uh well what can you call it center center attacking midfielder right there is open so i should rush this pass because he has so much space but in this case we notice that as well and we still have time to recover with renato and yeah i can't really explain much more about it so thank you guys all for watching this video and i hope you thoroughly enjoyed the second part um let us know do you guys need a third part because we could also be covering defending all the meta skill moves, um, the elasticos, the directional bridge, and then maybe explain it a little bit more in detail and what you should be aware of. Especially during these team of the season weekend leagues, they're very, very tough and uh, everybody abuses the meta, right? So let us know in the comment section below if you want a third uh, part or maybe we should be covering a different formation up next. Anyway, my name is Renzo. I'll see you guys in the next video. Either way, ciao, ciao. Thank you.